What is up, guys? I am 10 minutes late, but can I tell you why? <laughs> While I wait for you guys to get on here, I'll explain why I'm 10 minutes late. I'm supposed to be on 11 o'clock. It's like 11.10. Um, it's been a crazy morning. So I'm on cardiac anesthesia right now, and this morning we actually were doing um, a coronary artery bypass graft. So guy, heart disease, trying to repair those arteries, get him some blood flow. And apparently his heart disease was real, real bad because we gave him some medication to put him to sleep and his blood pressure plummeted. And he was like, I think it was 60 over 20. It was terrible. But either way, apparently low blood pressure is bad uh, for perfusion to your brain, if you didn't know that. And so we struggled to really get him back up and bring him back up. And so because of that, my break was delayed. But now I'm on break and I'm here with you guys. I uh, thank all you guys who are on here live with me right now and for you guys catching this later. I'm thinking I might start going live like almost every day. Would that be, we got a, this Amy Hassan wants to be a, a neosurgeon. I'm gonna assume that's a neurosurgeon in the future. It's a good, it's a good profession, uh, lots of school there. Um, but I think I'm gonna start going live um, almost every day. Would you guys be into that? Layla, hey there, hey there. Hello from Dallas to Iris. Um, so we're talking about MD versus DO today. And this is a question I get from a lot of you guys. And so again, I, it's funny because pre-meds think that they're original and that they have all these questions that no one else ever has. And I think that's the other, I don't know, kind of exciting and frustrating thing about YouTube is that everyone not only has questions, but everyone has opinions. And I hate how people get on YouTube and they spout stuff that's ridiculous um, just to have followers and have subscribers and they actually don't know what they're talking about. So I'm against all that and we'll get into that. But let's start MD versus DO. The first thing I want to say, so I guess I kind of touched on this. I hate YouTube because people get on here and don't have any expertise and pretend they do. I am an expert in all things medical school admissions and being a great student. With that being said, you should have a critical eye towards what anybody tells you about anything. So never take one person's opinion as law. Get like 50,000 opinions. That way you can have it vetted and also make your own, ooh, from Dubai, I like it. Um, so make sure that you develop your own opinions. And so I'm in the hospital, so you're gonna keep hearing these overhead announcements, sorry about that. but. Uh, Develop your own opinions and not have them based in just air. Have them based on factual things that are actually going to get you where you want to go. And don't look for yes people who are just going to tell you what you want to hear. It's about real honest answers. And that's why, right, this is the truth about MD versus DO. So let's break it down. The first thing to understand about MD versus DO is that everyone has their own unique path to their future. And we talk about traditional versus non-traditional students all the time. And there's nothing wrong with being non-traditional. Right? It's just not the normal way, but there's nothing wrong with being abnormal. right? Because for some people, that's what it takes for them to get to medical school. It's the same thing with MD versus DO. Neither path is substantially worse or <laughs> any kind of way. It's everyone's own unique journey. And if DO is the route you want to take and you actually want to take it, then it's totally valid. But if you don't want to do DO and you're doing DO just because that's what your options are left with, that's not necessarily the best reason to do it. And so think about that. Anyway, so the number one thing you should understand when we're talking about MD versus DO is the first thing is, well, actually, what is a DO degree? And a lot of students get this really confused and they assume that a medical degree means you're like a normal doctor you would see in a hospital. And they think a DO is like a holistic, homeopathic, right? They're going to rub herbs on your body and tell you, you know, eat this cinnamon and your heart attack will be cured. That's not what DOs are. DOs are Western medicine. They are legit physicians who practice real, what we call Western medicine, where there's surgery, there's medications, right? That you're treating patients with. So let's knock that out of here right now, okay? The difference is, is that in DO schools, they believe in hand manipulation techniques as a way of improving health in addition to traditional remedies. And so what that means is they believe there's certain body parts you can touch and certain maneuvers you can do that actually have health effects and health benefits. It's much like um, you would think of pressure points and different things like that. This is in, a, in addition to a standard medical school curriculum. And so one of the things you have to think about when you're going to a DO school is that not only are you gonna have to learn the traditional medical school things, you're also gonna have to learn those additional osteopathic techniques, which is great if you wanna use them, but if you don't have any interest in doing that, then it's just extra things that you have to learn. And as you guys know, medicine's <laughs> it's like a thousand billion things to learn, so why would you wanna learn more if you're not interested in it? So that's the first thing I would say. The other part of that is because the curriculum is slightly different, DO schools have their own board testing system. So for medical schools, what you guys are used to hearing about are the USMLE exams, right? Step one and step two. 
when you go to a DO school, in addition to doing those exams, if you want to go to a traditional residency, you also have to take the DO exam. And so that's another set of studying you have to do and another set of exams you have to do. Not only is that more expensive because you have to pay for the exam, but it's time consuming, it's stressful, and it's another barrier for you becoming the doctor you want to be. So you have to also think about that. I briefly kind of hit on this, and this is the second point, is residency selection. So there are separate DO residencies that are designed for DO students, and then there are the traditional MD residencies. DO residencies require you to take that DO exam I talked about. The MD residencies don't require that DO exam, but as a DO, you still have to take the other USMLE 1 and USMLE 2 exams. With the regular MD residencies, and these are the, the bulk of them in the country, there's few DOs, there's tons of MD programs. Um, they do accept DO students, and you can, it's totally valid to go from a DO school to a regular residency. The issue you have is that certain really, really competitive residencies will not accept DO students. And we can argue about whether that's fair or unfair or valid or not. It's just the, key, the facts, right? It's like I talked about the Caribbean schools. It's just the facts of the situation. So being a DO student may limit your options in terms of residencies and specialties once you finish. With that being said, your odds, right? So when people weigh it out, like, oh, should I go to a DO school or should I go to the Caribbean or go to the DO school. Because if you do a DO, you can still go into, let's see. No, 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 so not all the residencies merge. There's distinct DO residencies um, for DO if you wanna learn more DO techniques and go more in depth in there. There's separate MD residencies, which are the standard ones. However, like I said, DO students can go into MDs, residencies. So at my, I'm at UCSD for my residency, there are DOs in various residency programs at UCSD. It's not, an, it's not a problem, okay? But like I was saying, you're gonna have certain specialties and certain residencies at a certain place that won't take you as a DO, and so that limits your ability. So something to think about, because we all want options. And that's what I was talking about in that Caribbean video. I keep referencing that because this is kind of the similar draw when people are saying, okay, where do I apply? Do I do MD, do I do DO, do I do Caribbean? In life, I think the whole objective, right, this is all we want. We all want freedom. We want to have options and choice. And the whole point of working hard is so that way you can choose how you spend your time and doing what, right? You work hard so that way you can make your life what you want it to be. And so you always want to have options. And so MD is going to give you more options career-wise um, from a resident perspective. Also, the other thing to think about is once you go beyond residency, now you're out in practice as a physician, a lot of people think right, the wrong thing. They think that DOs are homeopathic doctors, incorrectly. Or what they assume is that, and we'll talk about the ease of getting in, that DO school for people who didn't get into medical school. And so they will assume that you are an inferior or a different type of doctor than an MD. And so because of that, some patients will actually discriminate against you and will say, oh, I don't want to see a DO. And I've seen that happen to people, and that's terrible and whatever. But, you know, again, it's not about what's fair and what's not. It's about what the reality is. And so that's another thing you need to consider. If you have a DO behind your name, as opposed to an MD, people might, might not understand what that's about. So it's one more barrier to being the doctor your patients want you to be, okay? And so <clears throat> the big point, right, and this is really why everyone cares about MD versus DO, everyone thinks that it's easier to get into a DO school. And that's absolutely true. It is easier to get to DO schools. It's fact, right? Why is it easier? Because most... The highest achieving pre-meds, for the most part, right? I'm not gonna generalize everybody. 99% of people who have those high GPAs, high MCAT scores, want to go to MD programs. So because of that, they don't end up applying to a whole bunch of DO schools, so therefore they're not in that applicant pool, making that pool more difficult. In my case, I didn't apply to any DO schools because I felt competitive for MD schools, so therefore I was not in that DO pool. You didn't have to compete against me. And so it is absolutely easier to get into a DO school. With that being said, don't think that your 2.5 GPA is getting you into a DO school. That's completely unrealistic. I get emails all the time from students, oh, well, you know what? I know I'm not committed for MD, but even though I got my 2.1 GPA and my MCAT is 10th percentile, DO school will take me, it's less competitive. No, DO schools are very competitive because they know you're actually gonna be treating patients Therefore, their standards are still very high. So you have to have 
exceptional credentials still to get into DL programs. So make yourself a competitive applicant, get a good GPA, get a good MCAT, get extracurriculars, so that way you can still get in. Don't think it's just gonna be like, oh, it's, it's by default, you just apply and you get in. It's not how DO schools work, just like MD schools. They're real programs, so it's difficult to get in. With that, someone asked about 99th percentile MCAT. You can have a 100th percentile MCAT, which is impossible, but you could have a 99.9% .9 MCAT, and if your GPA is garbage, you won't get into medical school. And you see this all the time, and if you look at the normal distribution, so, <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the AAMC, which is the American Association for Medical Colleges, puts out stats every year on the applicants to medical school. And if you look at the distribution in people's MCAT scores, you'll see that people, even people with 99th percentile MCAT scores, yes, they, most of them get in somewhere, but there are some of them who don't get into medical school. Because if your GPA is terrible, then you won't get into medical school. So that's the situation. Someone just asked, should we apply to DO schools just in case you don't get into MD schools? If you don't feel like you're absolutely competitive for MD schools, then apply to DO schools. Or on the other hand, if you're like, listen, I really like what the DO schools offer. I like this thought about you know, the, the person and being able to do these manipulation techniques. I would really want to learn that. Then apply to DO schools even if you are competitive for medical schools. But I think there's, there's nothing wrong necessarily with attending DO schools. It's everyone's own path. So should you apply to DO if you're not sure if you're competitive for medical schools? Absolutely. Should you apply to Caribbean schools if you're not competitive for medical schools? No. And I say that for the people who want to practice in America. I'm not saying if you're a foreigner and you want to stay foreign, then go to a Caribbean school. But if you're an American and you want to practice in America, don't go to Caribbean school because it's going to make your, your journey much more difficult. So ease of access. So yes, it is easier getting DO school. There is one nuance that I want to uh, tell you guys about because a lot of people are missing this is a legislative change, right? They're not up on their game. You got to be studying what's happening. But a couple months ago, uh, the DO application process changed. And it changed in that many of the DO schools are now no longer uh, accepting retakes as straight retakes. And let me explain what that means. As at an MD school, when you get an F in a class, then you retake the class and you get an A, when you go to turn in your AMCAS application, they average those two grades. So that A and that F, right, that zero, that four become a two. So it's like you got a C in the class. What people liked about the DO schools is that they used to, in the past, if you had an F and then you retook the class and got an A, they would eliminate that F from your calculation and your GPA and only use the A, which was great because then you would see your GPA just, right, it would, it would blossom. But... That is no longer the case for most DO schools. And so they've actually reversed their, self, their, their policy on that. And so they're averaging those grades too. So you're not going to see that big bump in your GPA that people have seen in the past. And I think the reason they've done that is because medicine is becoming more and more complex and crazy. And they're understanding that like, I, like you have to have a standard. And if you're allowing people who are subpar students to get into your school, they're going to have issues passing boards, being great with patients, all those things. And so they've kind of stepped up their game. So DO schools are extremely competitive, just like MD schools, just not as competitive. With having published undergrad research, it's all a big smorgasbord of stuff, guys, right? So you can ask specific questions. And that's why, again, I'm anti-YouTube because you're not gonna learn everything you need to learn about getting into medical school from a single YouTube video or from even 100 YouTube videos because they're too short, it's like 10 minutes, right? So, for example, I'm developing a, a course right now on how to do the medical school application. This course is darn near 10 hours. That's like, I filmed it raw without me editing, it's probably like 15 hours. But when I cut it down, it'll probably be around 10 hours of me explaining the application process and what schools are considering in your application. So if you imagine, if I have a 10 hour course on that, how in the world could you in a 15 minute or a three minute, which I see on YouTube, a three minute YouTube video, how could you explain how medical schools are evaluating and you can't? And so I encourage you guys, like I said, have multiple sources and then be a person who's thorough and you go into depth on what's going on. And I just saw a comment, but I cannot, it disappeared before I could actually read it and I don't know how to, Well, I don't know how to bring it back. So if you just commented, I'm sorry, I missed uh, what you just said. <laughs> but that's really the, the, the thing with MD and DO. So for start, one, there is no wrong path as long as you choose your own path and it's the right path for you. The second thing is, wait, is the American GBA scale 4.0? It's a 4.0 scale. Canada is different. Yeah, no, so it's 4.0. 
Oh, I just missed that going off topic comment, so you'd have to recomment. But anyway, let me recap real quick, and then I'll answer some of these questions. One, MD versus DO, pick your own path. The second thing is, uh, DO is not homeopathic. It's Western medicine with a little bit of a twist. The considerations when going to a DO school are what specialty do you want to go to and does that school allow you to match into that specialty and into that specialty in a region you want to train in for residency. So making sure that a DO school can get you where you want to go for your career. The other thing to think about is, right, when you're going to DO school, the patients may look at you differently because you have a DO instead of an MD. And then lastly, the ease of access to getting in. DO school is definitely easier to get into. So if you're not competitive for medical school, you have a better chance of getting into a DO school, but it's not super easy. So when you see someone who's a DO, of course they're qualified to be a doctor because they went to medical school. So don't think it's just easy to get in. I think that's that's about it. And that's MD versus DO in 16 minutes. So if you had if you had a comment and I didn't answer it, please recomment it because here on the screen I can't actually see. They appear for like five seconds and they disappear. And if I'm in the middle of talking, it's hard for me to talk and read at the same time. So quickly, I'm gonna hop off of here. But if you got a question, ask it now forever hold your peace. One, two, three. If you like this video, give this video a like right now on the screen. Hit like if you like this video. Stop messing around. 2020 merger will affect. Yeah, so I have an MCAT course that's actually coming out uh, this week. I'm going to make a pre-sale announcement later this week. You can check that out on my website, www.premedproductivity.com www.premedproductivity.com. That MCAT course is going to be off the hook, and part of that course is reviewing actually all these different um, uh, MCAT companies and which prep reviews you should use and how you should use them if you're going to use them. So that course is actually going to be called How to Dominate the MCAT Without Taking an Expensive Prep Class. And so it's a step-by-step -step guide for independent MCAT studying so that you can get a high score. So for people who just asked the MCAT question, check that out. Um, Tons of information on this YouTube channel. Watch my other videos. And thank you guys for tuning in. I think tomorrow, I think I'm going to go live. We'll figure out what we're going to talk about tomorrow. But we'll talk about something tomorrow. And let's call it, let's be safe. Let's say 6 p.m. tomorrow on this YouTube channel, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, get here and get some more information. I'll make an announcement on my Instagram. It's at Dominate Premed. If you're not following me, you need to follow me. I'll make an announcement about what the topic for tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time will be. Hello, San Francisco Badger. Welcome. So you guys have a great, great day. Uh, and thank you guys for supporting and coming on here live in the middle of your day and uh, getting some of this information. Later.